What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go over all of the modifications I've already done in just six months of owning my manual Toyota Supra. We're gonna go over piece by piece, kind of get my feedback on it, as well as a lot of your feedback on these same products. And at the end, we're gonna unveil how much money is sitting inside this car. Now, for the most part, all these parts I'm gonna list, you can order them from our website. My brother and I started a website last year and this year, once buying the Supra, we've really ramped it up and we had a lot of fantastic feedback from all of you who have ordered products from our site. So we appreciate all of you helping us get this started. So first and foremost, we're gonna start with underneath the hood. And as you can see, we have some nice carbon fiber goodies. Starting up with the Arma Speed Forge Carbon Fiber Strut Braces. Those are gonna be about $420. Really nice replacing the factory aluminum ones. We also have the Keys Motorsports upgraded charge pipe replacing the cheap plastic one. That is going to run you about $300. And then I have Arma Speed's carbon fiber full air intake, which is around $800. I did have the MST full intake, which is about $534 for the identical setup. However, of course, had to go for some more carbon fiber. So my review of those first few parts on the car. Air intake is a really awesome mod for the Supra. They don't cause any check engine lights or anything like that. They give you some amazing turbo sounds. It really livens up the experience of the car. And uh, both the ones I've had, the MST and the Armor Speed, both are great products. I've had no issues with either of them. Armor Speed is a little bit louder given it's carbon fiber. They're both gonna do the same for heat and they're both gonna give you the same performance benefits once tuned, of course. Stock tuning on the car, bolt on parts don't really add any power. The stock tune, the ECU, basically is designed to always put out stock power. So tuning these cars is where it comes alive. I do like the Armist Speed one a lot just because it is louder, it's a little bit more of a riot, but if you want a little bit more toned down intake, the MST is a great option. Now these carbon fiber strut braces, for those of you who have factory strut braces, these just go into the factory location easy enough. If you have a 2020, these also come with bolts to actually secure them in place since your 2020 won't have threaded holes on that strut tower. So a really cool product. And of course the Keys Motorsports charge pipe gets rid of that really crappy plastic one. And that way you're not gonna have any issues. Of course, once you tune it, add boost and things like that, it's just gonna be a better product. And it even has a port if you're gonna do nitrous or meth or water or something like that. So those first few mods are definitely a nice touch. Also under the hood, you can kind of see it. I have the MST high flow catted downpipe. You can see it right back there. That has been a very nice exhaust modification. That's gonna run you about $1,300. Now the catless version will be around $300. With this, there's no check engine light. It's been on the car for months now, no check engine light. A ton of you have already ordered this product and same sort of deal. Seems like you all really like it as well but that has been a fantastic exhaust upgrade to give it more flow, better sound. It makes a big difference, especially in person. And you know, you don't have to worry about tuning the car if you're not planning to do that anytime soon. You could run the Catless one on these cars without tuning. You're of course going to get a check engine light, but this is a good way to go. If you wanna keep things legal, keep things a little bit more simple and once tuned, you're still gonna get about the same power as that Catless system. So that's been a really, really nice exhaust upgrade and it's actually not hard to do on jack stands, super easy. Next up, we'll continue the performance mods, which is the rest of the exhaust system. So I have the AWE Touring resonated with the chrome tips. You can kind of see under here, the mufflers, got the resonators and everything. This is a fantastic exhaust system coming in around $2,300. This is the most expensive version that AWE offers. They do have a Touring version without the resonators. And then you can also get the Track version, which won't have mufflers and of course it's a significant price decrease. Now this exhaust sounds fantastic. It is something that the camera audio microphones cannot do justice. It is so good sounding. It's just got the perfect mature tone without making it sound noisy or loud. I am so impressed with it. Took a little bit to get the fitment spot on, but a few of you have ordered these already. Actually quite a few of these have sold. And once again, you guys comment back after you buy them and say it sounds so good. Definitely an awesome exhaust upgrade. Next up is some more carbon fiber on the rear of the car, which is the Keys Motorsports rear wing. Really nicely designed with the carbon fiber. That's gonna run you about $600. And then we have the Arma Speed carbon fiber rear canards. Those are gonna be $420. They look really cool. Of course, just adding to an aggressive look for the Supra. So no complaints there. Definitely enjoying the look of them. Fitment's really good. And uh, quite a few of those have been picked up already. A lot of you guys seem to like it. Now the wrap, you can see the whole car has been wrapped 
in a very nice blue color. I did that myself and it was about $350 worth of vinyl. So of course, if you went to a full professional shop, it's gonna be probably a three or $4,000 job, but I went ahead and knocked it out and it was a pretty cool five or six day experience wrapping the entire Supra. So that's been a fun project and I'm enjoying the pretty bright blue. Next up is suspension wheels and tires. You're also gonna see Keys Motorsports carbon fiber side skirts at $650 and Armor Speed Rock Guards at $60. So my car is sitting on H&R lowering springs. Now these are gonna run you around $400 for these springs. Drops the car 0.75 inches in back and an inch up front. Perfect ride quality, perfect drop. I mean, really, this is a fantastic setup. So next up, we have these wheels and tires. So we got the ESR CR5s wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Awesome setup. These were all from Fitman Industries. They carry pretty much everything under the sun. That whole setup is gonna run you around $2,700. Um, pretty affordable way to go, quite honestly, for brand new wheels and tires and a custom offset to fit the car nicely. So that's been a very cool upgrade and the car definitely looks good. We also have the AWE wind foilers. Those are $100 right here to make it to where I can actually enjoy the car with the windows down. That is a must have for a Toyota Supra. And if we move to the interior, we have my GR Store carbon fiber and leather steering wheel. It is so cool. That's gonna run around 600 bucks. It will depend on what he's got in stock, custom making and stuff like that. But that was about how much that one was. And then we have from Seatbelt Planet, custom seatbelts. This job is around a $300 job to get those replaced from black to the red. We of course have a $300 pedal commander underneath the footwell to really dial in the throttle response. Quite a few of those sell, and those are a mod. You have to try it to experience the benefit. So that leaves us with the grand total. How much money did you guys tally that up as you watched the video? So this car, as it sits, has a little over $12,000 worth of modifications. Honestly, nice chunk of change for sure on a $60,000 car. However, they truly do make the car come alive. Of course, it makes it your own. I love modifying a car and creating the car that I envision. Anybody can go buy a stock car and just drive a stock, which is perfectly fine. But for me, I wanna customize it, make it my own. The way this car sounds, the way it performs, the way it handles, and the way it looks is something that, you know, I can look at it and know that my car is kinda of unique compared to the next car. And with modification, that's why we love doing it. And these mods all really, really high quality. And we don't really wanna carry things on our website that we don't like. That's why I love being able to test out the products, share them with all of you guys, and have them on our site. So it's really been a cool opportunity to have a website in addition to our YouTube channel where we focus on all these parts. So let's take it for now, a quick spin, talk a little bit more about the parts, and talk about why it is so much more fun modified. All right, so six months later, 12 grand in mods. As you can tell, car sounds so incredibly nice. Man, the downpipe and the exhaust really added to the pops that the car makes in sport mode and that intake. <laughs> oh, there's so much more drama and character. The one downfall with these Supers in the stock form, they don't really have that extra character. They do in some sense, with the sport mode, I mean, it certainly tightens up the car, but it's missing some of that turbo noise and a little bit louder exhaust. It's not bad in the stock form, but when you modify it, gosh, it comes alive. And this is all stock tuning, so just the gurgles and pops have been amplified with that downpipe along with the exhaust. And the intake just lets that engine make some noise. <laughs> now these springs and wheels, those really do dial in the handling just a little bit. The Supra, fantastic handling car, one of the best ones out of the gate. And when you do the lowering springs, it makes it to where it's a little bit more precise and hunkered down at high speeds. The stock car going 100, it feels a little on the floaty side. So when you do the springs, I feel like that really sharpens it up. And then the wider wheels, wider tires and everything, you know, it gives you better traction and it seems to be planted a little better with extra width on those tires. Now interior, the interior is really nice on these Supras. It's refined, it's a nice BMW interior. A little plain, I mean the seats are super comfortable and it's a great place to be. But with the little touches I've done, the red seat belts, adding that color matches the calipers. And then this new steering wheel with the flat bottom, the carbon that matches the center. 
the white striping and the white stitching and everything. It just fits the theme and it makes it look more like an OEM plus kind of wheel. So it dials in the interior to where it really should kind of look like this from the factory. And then of course the wrap, you know, and all the little cosmetics, the carbon fiber bits here and there on the outside. You know, that makes it to be my own with my own taste and how it's gonna look. definitely makes the car way more fun and look just the way I want it to look. So I've enjoyed the mods on it in this first six months. So then next up on the list for the next batch of mods, I need to get the windows tinted. It's summer right now. Uh, we're in a fishbowl, so definitely need to get that done. And then the last thing is tuning, you know, dive into that. When I made the video where I had this on the dyno, the way it sits with the bolt-ons to see, kind of get my baseline, I mentioned doing a JB4 or some sort of piggyback tune. Uh, there's been some mixed reviews on that with the manuals. Apparently, some people have had issues, so I don't know if I'm going to go that route or not. For content-wise, it would have been really cool to do the JV4, test that out, dyno it, play with it, and then go full ECU tuning. So I'm still kind of torn on what I want to do. Of course, I need to mix. You know, more content is better than less content, so doing that would be beneficial for me. So I just got to see what the safest and best approach is for the car. When I do decide to do the ECU tuning, I'm going to have to ship the ECU and it's going to be going to Europe, getting unlocked and everything. And we'll kind of see what that road is all about. So those are the two next things. And then I'll probably enjoy the car the way it sits for a little bit. And then as we get into the next stage of the car, when I unwrap the car, I'll probably do a few new products, probably do different wheels, maybe even a different exhaust setup, change it up, try on some new parts. Hopefully I can make enough content on new products just to show every single product for this car. But that is six months later with what mods I've done and how much it cost. Uh, pretty happy with everything overall. I think everything I put on the car made the car better, made it sound better, more fun to drive, more engaging, and a little bit more my own. So no complaints, very happy with the way the car is sitting currently. And uh, once again, I'll have our website links down below if you wanna view any of these parts for your car. I'm glad I'm able to test them out just to really tell you if they're good or not. And I think there's a lot of great products out there for these Supras. And I certainly had a fun time modifying my Supra. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, <laughs> give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Throw us a thumbs up and I'll see you all in the next video.